Newton's laws, Newton's laws of motion. I think the best way to intuitively understand Newton's laws is to come to empty space where we are removed from all friction forces and gravitational forces. So we're away from any planets as well, empty space. Growing up on Earth and living our entire adult lives on Earth, our understanding of the laws of motion gets clouded because friction and gravitational forces, so gravity in the form of Earth pulling us towards it, so everything around us has, has weight, are permanently present in the world around us all of our lives. And so, for example, if we come to Newton's first law of motion, which says that an object at rest tends to stay at rest and an object in motion tends to stay in motion, that seems to contradict our natural observation. Objects seem to want to stay at rest. An object tends toward the state of rest, but that's not the case. Friction is not a natural part of the laws of motion. Gravity is not a natural part of the laws of motion. It's an external factor. In reality, an object at rest tends to stay at rest, and an object in motion tends to stay in motion. Another way to say Newton's first law is that objects do not want to accelerate. All objects tend to not accelerate. So if we come into empty space and throw a baseball, we throw it. When it leaves our hand, it has a velocity, a velocity and a direction of that velocity. That ball is going to continue at that speed in that direction for infinity without changing its speed or its direction. Changing its speed is a form of acceleration. Changing its direction is also a form of acceleration. So it will continue at that speed in that direction for infinity until an external force acts on it. So maybe it gets pulled on by gravity. Maybe an asteroid hits it. And if you threw the ball, if you threw a curve ball, then the moment the ball leaves your hand, it will have a forward motion and it will also have a spinning motion. That's like an, that's called an angular velocity. It will have a linear velocity in a direction and it will have a angular velocity spinning about its center of mass. So the ball will continue at that speed in that direction while at the same time spinning at that angular velocity around that same spinning axis for eternity, forever. Similarly, if you took this baseball and you placed it perfectly still in empty space, it would remain perfectly still for eternity until an external force comes and acts on it. So objects tend to not accelerate. Okay, so that's Newton's first law. An object at rest tends to stay at rest, and an object in motion tends to stay in motion unless an external force acts upon that object. What about Newton's second law? Newton's second law is the classic F is equal to MA formula. It allows us to put numbers to these ideas of motion. So that baseball that we threw, depending on the force I threw it with, how fast is it going to be moving when I release it? And what does that depend on? How is how fast something moves related to the force you put on it? That's what F is equal to MA is all about. So let's say we have a cruise ship in empty space and it's perfectly still. Now, a person, you can see this person, comes along and is going to push on the cruise ship. Now, to make things simple, we're going to assume the person pushes right at the center of mass of the ship. So the ship is not going to move to the right and also be spinning about its center of mass. The push is just going to cause the ship to move without spinning this direction. If the person pushes with a force of 20 pounds, what happens? Well, we can calculate this with Newton's second law. The, the acceleration of the ship in the direction of which the force is applied is equal to that force, the magnitude of that force, divided by the mass of the ship. So that force is 20 pounds. If we convert 20 pounds to Newtons, 20 pounds is about 90 newtons. If we say the weight of the ship is about 120,000 tons, if we convert that weight to newtons, that's about 1,177 mega newtons. And we know that the weight of something, W, is equal to mg. So divide 1,177 mega newtons 
by the gravitational constant, 9.81 meters per second squared, and we'll get the mass of the ship. We're using the weight of the ship on Earth and the gravitational constant on Earth to get the mass of the ship, which is about 1.2 times 10 to the eighth kilograms. If we do this calculation, we get 7.5 times 10 to the minus seven meters per second squared. This is equal to 2.95 times 10 to the minus four inches per second squared. So when we were applying the 20 pound force to the ship, the speed of the ship was increasing by 0 0.000295 inches per second every second. Let's say our hands were in contact with the boat applying the force for two seconds. So if we multiply this times two, we get 0 0.00059 inches per second. The instant the boat is no longer in contact with our hands and the force is not being applied, this is the speed of the boat. Let's convert this to inches per hour. So 2.12 inches per hour. As a result of the force we applied, the boat has a velocity of 2.12 inches per hour in the direction of the applied force, and it will stay at that speed for infinity unless an, unless an external force comes and acts on it. This we were able to determine with Newton's second law. Now it was a simplified case where we applied the force right to the center of mass of the boat in a single direction, but you can apply Newton's second law over the entirety of three dimensions. If there is a net resultant force on the center of mass in this direction, then the ship is going to accelerate without spinning in this direction. Same idea, if there's a net resultant force at the center of mass on the ship in this direction, it's going to want to accelerate in this direction. And same thing in this direction. If there is some force that's not directly along any of these axes, then it'll, it will have components in these different directions, kind of like northeast or southwest. It has components in the south and the west. And if there is a net force applied on the ship away from its center of mass, then you have a force that creates a, a torque or a moment about one or multiple of these axes. Newton's law of angular motion says that the torque is equal to the moment of inertia of the body times the angular acceleration. So if you apply a force on the ship away from the center of mass, you'll be creating a torque on the ship about the center of mass. You will want to spin about this axis. The angular acceleration, you divide the torque by the moment of inertia of the ship. And similar to the components, the linear components of acceleration, you can accelerate about one or multiple of these axes. For the situations that we've described so far, throwing the baseball and pushing on the ship, it's important to note when the forces were and weren't being applied. So the baseball, when it was in your hand and you were pushing on it, in the action of throwing it, the force was being applied. That's when the baseball was accelerating. The moment the baseball left your hand, so there was no contact, no force being applied, the velocity was set. There was no more accelerating at that instant because at that instant, no force was being applied anymore. And similarly, you were throwing the curveball, so you were applying that torque or moment, that spin about the center of mass of the baseball. As your fingers were in contact with the baseball, applying that force, the ball was undergoing an angular acceleration. But the moment it leaves contact with your hand, the ball no longer has any angular acceleration. At that moment, it has a fixed angular velocity. And you might say, well, why doesn't it curve like a curveball? 
air causes the ball to curve, to change its direction. Air is applying a force to the ball. There is no air in space. And with the force on the ship, as the force is being applied, as the person's hands are in contact with the ship, the ship is accelerating. But the moment there's no force, there's no contact, the velocity of the ship is fixed because there's no more force. It cannot accelerate if there's no force. Okay, Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. What this is saying is that there is no force that exists in the universe that does not occur in, in, a, in a pair. Every single force that exists has a corresponding other force that is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction to that first force. If you push on a wall, you are exerting a force on the wall with your hands. At the exact same time, the wall is pushing back on your hands with that exact same force, but in the opposite direction that you're pushing. Gravity. Earth is pulling you towards itself with a force. But at the exact same time, you are exerting that same force, pulling Earth towards yourself. Of course, Earth is so massive, it doesn't, it doesn't feel the effect of your force pulling, pulling it towards you. Okay, the 20-pound force that the person pushed on the ship in this direction the ship also pushed on the person with that exact same force in the opposite direction. Therefore, as you can imagine, the ship accelerated and started moving to the right, but there was also a 20-pound force on the man to the left. So what happened to the man as a result of the 20-pound force? Let's use Newton's second law. What was the man's acceleration when the force was being applied? Well, it's a 20-pound force, which we said was about 90 newtons. Say the man weighs 200 pounds, which is about 900 newtons. So his mass is about 92 kilograms. zero point nine eight meters per second squared this is about 39 inches per second squared so when the boat was pushing back on the man in this direction with a force of 20 pounds the man's speed was increasing in this direction by 39 inches per second every second if that force was applied for two seconds then the man's speed is 78 inches per second. The man will move with a velocity of 78 inches per second in this direction for eternity until an external force acts on him. 